In this video, we will look at how to set up a circuit which contains a current dependent current source. Firstly, let's create a new schematic and we will call it dependent current source. To find a current dependent current source, we simply press Ctrl L and then type in CCCS. We have three options, but we choose the first one, that's the AWR own model. And then you can see that we have some options there which we don't really want to use. So I can double click to open up the parameters and then I can hide some of them. For example, the phase offset and the break frequency and the time delay. We don't have to worry about any of those at all. And this makes things a little bit more compact. For our current source, we have a control variable which is a current and also an output variable which is a current. Now R1 is our sensing resistor, so it behaves very much like an ammeter. So it just wants to measure the current without affecting the circuit. To measure a current without affecting the circuit, we want R1 to be zero. So it's effectively a short circuit, it doesn't change the voltage across its terminals, the current that goes through it just goes through it without any opposition from the resistance, and hence we don't affect the operation of the circuit. So we need to set the input resistance of this current controlled source to zero ohms. When it comes to the output resistance here, R2, this is again used to model non-ideal sources, but we just want our source to stay ideal. In this case, ideally what we want is to have R2 to be infinite, so it doesn't actually take any current away from the current source. Note that if I double click on this source again, R2 being zero means R2 being infinite in AWR. So we need to leave it to zero, just as it is. And this way we've set up an ideal current control current source. Next, I'd like to set up a circuit which comes from your book and that is shown in figure 3.5. As we did in the previous video, firstly I will set up the circuit just using the output of the current control current source because that's what we see in the schematic. So I'll move this uh, away a little bit and I'll also flip it, uh, you'll see why in a moment. And to flip an element you right click on it, you select flip, and then you draw the axis about which you want to flip it and there you have it, you flipped it the other way around. Next I will place all the other circuit elements shown in the circuit of figure 3.5 on the circuit schematic here. So now we have to feed current IX into the resistor R1. In order to do this, we have to be aware of what the direction of current stipulated by this circuit element in AWR is. And the direction of current is from terminal one to terminal two. So we have to be aware of that. So we will get our IX to flow from terminal one to terminal two. The easiest way to do this is to just put this R1 resistor in series with R2, the 2 ohm resistor. And what we can do is create connections like so to begin with. And then remove the short circuit between these two points. Now we have R1 in series with R2. R1 is a zero ohm resistor, so it shouldn't affect things at all. We've got current flowing in the right direction from terminal one to terminal two of the input of our current source. So everything should be working well. The last thing that we are left to set is the magnification factor of current IX, which for this source is two. So the output of the current source is two IX. Now, if we right click on the schematic and select add annotation and do that for current and voltage, and then simulate, we get exactly the same results as we get in example 3.2, which is the one that features the circuit in figure 3.5.